Hello there, Michaelers. How is everyone doing? I am in a rush as usual. You know, I don't like to just put on makeup. Just, you know, so when I have makeup on, just a little bit, you know, got a little lip gloss on. Um, I like to go on live uh, for you guys. So I have an event to go to. You see my Stays All Day Shay is here. And I uh, just want to just do my, my promotion because I am my own sponsor for my Shay's Stays All Day Shay or my Michael Jackson Alive docuseries. Anyway. Um, stays all day shade. This one is flowers blasting. It smells like the perfume flower bomb. Okay, but flowers blasting. And once you put the shea butter um, smell in it, it just kind of excites the smell and just kind of explodes, right? So um, don't forget to order your stays all day shade. And I will give you a mystery free fragrance where I'll tell you the name of it as a sample okay so all orders until i run out of these okay will get a free sample and i got new fragrances oh my god i gotta put on there uh uh some new fragrances that i'm selling that are magnificent i just have not had time so shaybutterperfumestore.com or stays all day shea.com last through work and play a eh? because everybody's got skin Right. All right, guys. All right. Michael News. Ready for Michael News? OK. Most of the stuff sometimes I put on my Facebook page, but I also upload this to YouTube. So all you subscribers, of YouTube, please subscribe or all you people watching on YouTube viewers, please subscribe. Please subscribe. I've been at 27,000 for years now. OK. So anyway, um, but I al always put in something new. So there are some new things. But first, Happy birthday uh, to Brandon Howard, a.k.a. Brandon Jackson, a.k.a. Billy Jean and Michael Jackson's son. OK, and if you want to know why I believe that, watch a live for Michael Jackson, the missing pieces. OK, for that in Paris, Jackson turned two five, which is seven. So maybe this is her lucky year. I think Brandon is turning four two. Uh, 42 because he was born in 1981 oh my god guess what guess what I learned Michael had bought a condo on Lindley in Encino and I've been there and I've showed pictures of it and I think I've done videos about it and he still owns it according to the late the latest released um, accounting statement by the the estate right on Lindley and he bought it in uh, February 1981. And I always thought, why did Michael buy a condo and still stay at Havenhurst, right, uh, down the street? Well, um, I thought at first, when I didn't know very much, I thought he bought it because him and Teresa Gonzalez, she doesn't like me anymore, because I say the horrible, horrible thing that Michael is alive. That is so horrible. It's true, okay? I've been reporting this for over 13 years. Anyway. So I thought maybe he he bought it so he can bring his girlfriends there or something like that um, or somebody else he was dating. No, he bought it so that he can um, visit with his son privately without media prying eyes because he bought it February 1981. Brandon was born early April, April 2nd, 1981. So we're talking about Mickey being huge pregnant, right? And we're talking about uh, um, six weeks later, she gives birth or even as little as four or five weeks later, she gives birth. Because I don't know what day exactly in February 81 that he bought that he took possession of that condo. OK, so I believe that just more evidence. OK, just more evidence. And they said, why don't you stay there? He said, I die of loneliness. Well, he bought it. Because I've been there many times and I've been inside of the condo complex, not inside that unit. Ice Cube also owns a, um, a unit in, in, in that same condo building, right? Or owned, okay, a unit. I don't know if he still has it. I haven't checked, but he did at one time. So I've been inside the complex, right? So you enter from, there's parking in front, of course, street parking. But then there's an alley in the back. And then you can go inside of a parking lot so anybody can... You you know, hide, you know, uh, coming in and it has private parking in the back, you know. So I and then, you know, you walk to his apartment. I believe I believe that Michael bought that uh, that condo so that he can visit with his son, Brandon, without prying eyes. 
somebody brought that to my attention and I was like, let me check, let me check. And sure enough, just weeks before Brandon was born, Michael bought that condo on Lindley. But boom, boom, shh, more, 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 more evidence. Okay, but happy birthday to Brandon and happy birthday to Paris. All right, so a couple more things and I gotta go. I only have a few minutes. Okay, um, let me let me go before I got two videos to show you guys, okay? Um, uh, Janet, she's in talks to do a mini series about her life, okay? Um, the the uh, poster for the Michael album is out. The poster, so this is the bad era, okay? So we know they're going to cover the bad era, okay? So this is the Michael poster, right? I think it's okay. You know, I, I think it's okay. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be a sunrise, and this is supposed to be a part of Michael's signature, but I think it's okay, you know. Um, and we, of course, wish uh, Jafar the best acting in it, of course, okay. Um, and then we have, let's see what else I have here. Um, uh, Janet's in talks. It, it hasn't, the deal has not been sealed. Um, anybody, you know, I, I posted on here memory about Michael going to a cryonics convention, I'm telling you. <laughs> and he was, in, it was a crying body devil. Come on. Okay, watch my live docuseries. It was not Michael's dead body. Okay, uh, here is something, a blast from the past, April 3rd, where um, on Paris's, I posted it on Paris's birthday, but I'm not, oh, 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 you got to watch it. This was, um, had to do with Paris posting the Pearl album, Janis Joplin Pearl album. Let's see. Paris posted on a Pearl album one day before the estate registered the domain that MJ registered on June 25th, 2009. Then it left, let it lapse. Then I owned it. And then the, uh, the estate purchased it. So this was the Michael Jackson death hoax. Um, they first they bought it, um, on June 25th, 2009. Watch the first alive for that. And then I bought it. And then the estate bought MichaelJacksonDeathHoax.com. I mean, how much plainer can it be? Okay. But the day before that, uh, Paris posted, uh, the Pearl album, like, Pearl, look, look what happened. Look what we did. See, August 18, 2017. And this was, um, on, uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's see. Of July. Did I say August? July 18th, 2017. And this was registered July 19th, 2017. So we're talking about one day apart. Okay. So it was kind of like she posted Pearl. Guess what? Guess what? And you know, my, of course, Michael's behind all that. Okay. And we thank Paris for her clues and BG for his first clue, which was a big one. The actor that's in my uh, short film, A Prisoner of Fame, that plays Michael, plays Michael faking his death, is an actor in BG short film. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Now we have two. Cecil's dad. You guys know Cecil's dad was a big wig executive part owner of Casablanca Records. He owned a piece of it. And, um, uh, and Casablanca Records really did some great, great, great stuff. So here is the trailer. We went and saw it. Oh my God, it was so good. So you guys need to go see Spinning Gold. Here is the trailer. I'm watching it for the, fir the trailer with you guys for the first time. It's only two and a half minutes. Okay. Ready? Midnight plane to Houston. My people from Georgia, they would never take a plane to Houston. We were in the business of making journeys from short. So over 200 million records became the soundtrack of your lives. But how do you expect me to tell you how all that really happened? This is Casablanca Records, the biggest independent label anyone had ever seen. And the artists, they were famous. That's Cecil Dad. That's the guy who plays Cecil Dad. Brothers, Gladys Knight, Harlan, Bill Withers, Donna Summer. They legally changed my name. No! Everything That's, hotter in summer. Okay, right there. That plays Cecil's Everything Dad. Hotter in summer. And we knew what Casablanca could be. We 
over $7 million in debt. You broke. The whole town knows it. What the hell do you really want? You didn't come over here. That's to beat up Bruce. I did. That's Cecil's dad. We were waging an all-out war against all the majors. All the Neil Bogart. Neil Bogart. Motown actually put a hit on us? You're going to need to make a phone call. You just called the Italian mob to tell the black mob not to kill us. You had a better idea? <laughs> Midnight plane to Houston. My people from Georgia, they would never take a plane to Houston. <laughs> One final bet. On who? On us. Lift off. Let's go. You went right about that. Why'd you sign us? You had to know how hard this is gonna be. Kiss. Because two kids from Queens had dreams about being the next gods of rock. That is who you are. So, what happens next? You do. Okay, so that is a great movie. Cecil and I went and saw it. It was so good. It was in the movie theaters and is in limited release. So hurry up and go see it fast, okay? It's really super good. And when I said that, that's the character that plays Cecil's dad. So at the end, when they're showing the real people, right, there's several pictures of Cecil's real dad in there at the end, okay? So it was so great. It was such a good movie. It's an unfortunate ending. Um, but please go out and see. It's called Spending Gold. All right. So now we have uh, news about another movie. And then I got to go. Okay. Another movie. Um, uh, no, another. It's a play. Okay. It's a play. Let me do this. It's a play. And uh, I'm going to play the trailer for you guys. But it's been around for years. They finally made it into a play. It's a little bit silly. And I'm not sure that it is totally respectful of Michael Jackson, but not really disrespectful. But I feel sorry for the guy that's playing Michael. He has to apologize for like being a Michael supporter and playing the role. And it's like, God, these these lies. You know, Michael's been acquitted for God's sakes. The FBI, the CIA, two grand juries, the, all the media companies in the world, LAPD, Santa Monica PD. I mean, a 13-week trial. Nothing that said that Michael Jackson was a pedophile. He hung around with young boys because he liked doing boy things and they were prepubescent. That means they were not interested in sex, right? Because he didn't want to be sexually harassed or have people have crushes on him and let that get in the way of him trying to relive his childhood. People are like, why else was he hanging around little boys? Because he didn't want to be sexually harassed. That's why. It's that simple. Okay, so now we got the quick answer for people. Michael hung with little boys because he did not want to be sexually harassed, for goodness sakes. Okay, and he couldn't really say that, oh, I'm so sexy that, you know, I'm arrogant and I'm conceited. The reason why I hang around with little boys is because they're the only ones that aren't sexually harassing me. How do you say that? Okay, so basically... He just wanted to relive his childhood and not let any kind of crushes or any kind of sex get in the way. It's that simple. Okay. So anyway, this is, uh, here, I'll just play, I'll play it. Okay. This is Spectrum News. Okay. And I recorded this. Ah. Story takes center stage along with some unusual twists and turns in the new musical called For the Love of the Glove. Christopher G. gives us a preview. It's described as the very unauthorized biography of Michael Jackson, as told by his glove. I'm Christopher G. in Los Angeles. I'll give you a behind-the-glove look at this musical fable, which hopes to illuminate the humanity behind the complex character many still call the king of pop. How do you tell the story of a figure as monumental and controversial as Michael Jackson? 
The team behind For the Love of the Glove have created a fantastical musical fable that tells Jackson's real-life story through the eyes of his glove, which just happens to be part of an alien group that crashes on Earth. Eric B. Anthony plays Michael Jackson in the production, having been a lifelong fan of the King of Pop. Regardless of any of the stuff that could possibly be connected to Michael Jackson, I'm a fan because as an artist, his artistry is undeniable. Using some clever puppetry techniques, the play follows Michael Jackson's rise to fame initially with the Jackson 5, but despite the satirical tone, Eric says it was important to portray Jackson as a real person. Who was he really? Why was he the way he was? Why could a person possibly end up doing outlandish things based on the circumstances that they were born into? Jackson's childhood, religious upbringing, pivotal relationship with Motown founder Mary Gordy, and even the allegations of child abuse are addressed, but writer-director Julia Nitzberg says the fantastical elements were a necessary framing device in order to tackle the tricky subject matter. The only way Michael Jackson's life story makes sense is if he has an alien who's controlling him, who looks like a glove, and is giving him all his powers in exchange for the most amazing talent of uh, any performer in the history of music. Julian says the play doesn't shy away from the more controversial aspects of Jackson's sometimes scandalous life and career. Great theater is about kings and their fall, and Michael the King of Pop, so we wanted to really gain to understand his relationship with his family, understand the religious and political and racist policies of the country that impacted him, and making it all understandable. And Eric says at the play's heart is a character he hopes the audience can relate to. Hope people get and an understanding about like where we connect with each other is not in what we do, but like who we are. Although Michael Jackson remains a controversial figure and his real life story ended tragically, for the love of the glove might give audiences a new perspective on this complicated yet very human superstar. Okay. They said controversy how many times? I don't know. Um, complicated, not really. Um, uh, it's just that he didn't express himself correctly. If he was able to say, I hang around with little boys because they're not sexually harassing me. <laughs> you know, gosh, I mean, that looks hard to say. But, you know, it, th- that's the truth. Because why else? You know, and he wanted to relive his childhood. All right. So anyway, um, I feel sorry for the actor who had to apologize. Oh, I, you know... Uh, no matter what, he was a great artist. No, he was a great human being, and he he is a great human being. And they said that um that uh he died tragically. He did not. He faked his death to escape all the BS. Okay. So anyway, watch the Alive docu series. Go to MichaelJacksonInsider.com, and I will see you guys next time. Okay. Bye bye. Don't forget to order your stays all day shay. <laughs> More new fragrances are on my website. Shea Butter Shea. S H E A Butter. Shea Butter Perfume Store. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye.